All right, so it's no secret whatsoever that we absolutely love our fur babies, be they dogs, cats, or otherwise. But one downside of having a pet inside your house um, can be the, the fur and the shedding that gets spread all around. Now, not only is this an issue just for having to clean it up and making a mess, but for those of us that suffer from uh, pet-related allergies, this can also make a quite an ordeal as well. So in this video, I'll be talking about a new entrant to the pet brush market, and that is the King Comb. And I'll be kind of evaluating a couple different criteria be it just frankly how well it works, um, how well it's made, which leads to how long it's gonna last, as well as price and cost comparisons. Now, if you've been around this channel for a while, you are bound to have noticed that I'm a huge fan of an existing pet brush that has been around for many years, and that is the Kong Zoom Groom. Now, I've always loved this little brush because one, it's very affordable. You usually can find it for around $10, but as pricing and availability fluctuates, maybe that changes a little bit, but overall, it's a pretty darn cheap brush. Um, in addition to that, it's just made from a soft rubbery material with these nice little nubs that stick out that just do a fantastic job of really brushing at a dog and getting all the excess hair and fur off of them. And it's also useful during showers and baths. Now, while this works great for short head breeds like Gus here, who's a Great Dane, it may not work quite as well for dogs with undercoats or just really heavy long fur. Um, so that's kind of why I was asked by another viewer to take a look at the King Home here to see how it compares. Now, starting off, the first thing that we'll go ahead and jump into and we'll head outside for this is a quick uh, test just to see how frankly well they work. Because if they don't work, then it doesn't matter and this is all a complete waste of time. So let's head outside and take a look at both the King Comb and the Kong Zoom Broom in a real world comparison here. All right, so now onto the most important part of the video, the real world test. Now we've gone outside to do a very scientific study to see exactly which brush here does a better job of removing the excess hair from Gus. Now usually she gets a brushing about once a week just to kind of keep the, the dander and the extra kind of hair off of her so that way it's not inside the house. But I've let her go a couple weeks here so she's looking a little bit rough like she really needs a good brushing. So we'll spend two minutes per side. My plan is to kind of going down the middle of her back just do uh, half one side with the Kong Zoom Groom for two minutes and half the other side with the King Comb. Um, it's going to be a rough approximation but I think it'll at least give me a good idea for how well each one works. Um, for the king comb because it has kind of the mixed surfaces. I'll start with first the de-shedding edge specifically and then work into the kind of bristled side. And obviously with our zoom groom we've only got one edge with the soft bristles so we'll do that the entire time. All right guys. Room. So with our control out of the way, we'll now go, now go ahead and try the King Comb to see how it does by comparison. I'll once again start with the uh, serrated edge here, the, the specific de-shedder. Now important thing to point out, um, you want to make sure you're pressing very gentle. There should not be a lot of pressure when using this. It just should be enough to kind of graze the fur. Obviously Gus has a very thin, short coat here. Uh, so we certainly will not be digging in deep, for, but for longer hair breeds, you could of course choose to extend this edge out a little bit further.
All right, so now that was an extremely scientific test, as you can see, but my kind of key takeaway is that both brushes do a pretty darn good job of getting a lot of hair and fur off. I did notice that using the specific de-shedding edge that is on the king comb, that it did seem like it did a better job of pulling out those kind of smaller hairs that are kind of underneath their coat. Um, one thing for whether it's a Great Dane or another breed with short hair, you really do have to be very careful with these sharp edges because you don't want to actually scratch their skin. That could lead to infections and other issues that would cause more problems than just simply avoiding extra shedding. So that would be the one thing I would really caution for short haired breeds. However, when I think for longer haired breeds, this thing could be an absolute lifesaver for kind of getting out those undercoats and those other areas that really blow out really heavy in the spring and summer as they're kind of letting go of that extra winter coat there. So for a longer haired breed, this is definitely a really good option, or if you're in a house where you have a mixture of both short and long haired breeds, the King Comb, if you could only have one brush, may actually be the better performing one there. However, if we're just thinking about, you know, short haired breeds, if you only have that like a great day in your house, the King, uh, or the Kong Zoom Groon is definitely hard to argue with just in terms of how well it works. All right, so now that we've gotten out of the way, both brushes do a really darn good job of, you know, getting the excess hair and fur and dander off of our dog. The next most important question, of course, always will boil down to cost. Now, the kind of incumbent here, the Kong Zoom Groom, I've seen that usually can be had in different stores for around $10 per brush. Um, if availability is running really short, I've seen it race all the way up to around $20, but still in the grand scheme of things, that's not a ton of money. Um, by comparison, the King Comb is a little bit more expensive. Um, I've seen it as low as $20, as well as up to $38. So kind of depending on where you get it, time of the year and availability, it may be a little bit more expensive than the Kong Zoom Groom, but it's still in the grand scheme of things, we're not talking about a really, really expensive tool. And just looking at both these brushes kind of, you know, as the next topic here, you know, which one do I think will last a long time? I think both look like they're pretty well made. The Kong Zoom Groom is just a very simple kind of durable soft rubber. Um, so that would last decades uh, unless your dog chews it up for some reason. So I certainly would not worry about anything going wrong. The King Comb, also very well made. Um, it's got a hard kind of plastic exterior. The little bristles here on the one side are a nice kind of hard rubbery material as well. Um, the only area that potentially you might run into issues, and this would be after years of use, or if you you know leave it outdoors and it's always wet, you never dry it off. Perhaps this little sliding mechanism where you have the metal edges here. Um, I didn't check to see if it's stainless steel or not, but perhaps you deal with a rusting issue or they wear out, or this sliding mechanism just gets stuck if it gets really gunked up on the inside. That'd be the only real concern I have. But granted, we're still talking five years minimum as long as you take decent care of it probably longer in the real world. So durability really in a long time, I wouldn't really have any major concerns for either of these um, when it comes to heavy pet usage. All right, so if you're trying to make a decision between one of the two, I would say that if you have only one dog in your house and they're a short herd breed, like a Great Dane, I would say just go ahead and stick with the tried and true, the Kong Zoom Groom, just because it generally is a little bit cheaper than the King Comb. And then also you don't have to worry about accidentally digging in too hard with that metal de-shedding edge and cutting into like any bumps in their body or damaging their skin because it is only those soft bristles. It'll do a great job of getting off all their excess hair and dander and also being very useful in baths while not having that concern about am I pressing too hard or damaging their skin. Now, if you have long breeded or long haired dogs in your house as well, the King Comb is gonna be your superior option. I just feel like it does a better job of really getting underneath that top coat and kind of digging in to pull out those undercoat and all those little fine hairs. So. Really, it's going to depend on, you know, what you think makes most sense for the dogs that you currently have in your house. Of course, if you use one and you don't like it, you can always try to return it or just simply get the other one. But either one at the end of the day, I think it's going to be a good option for most pet owners. And it's certainly better than having no brush at all. Um, that is definitely not a best case scenario when it comes to keeping excess hair and dander out of your house. I would always recommend a brush. Now, if you do decide that the King Comb is right for your household, I can save, help you save a little bit of money by using our discount code that'll get you 21% off. So that certainly helps there. And you can take advantage of that by going to greatdanecare.com forward slash K-O-M-B. And that'll forward you on so that way you're able to take advantage of the discount. Now, just to quickly call this out, this video is not sponsored by Kong. They did not send us this product. We bought it with our own money. So this is a completely unbiased review that was actually suggested by a reviewer. So thank you out there to the person who suggested it. Um, hopefully you found this review helpful, and until next time, stay dating, my friends.